Today is Monday the 14th of uh, November and it's the first day of the second week of the COP. Uh, the COP runs over two weeks and they are in, in effect two different COPs. The first week are negotiations between uh, negotiators who are generally uh, government officials from the various governments and they try and negotiate the decisions uh, and finish them by the end of the week. Uh, it's quite typical that they don't finish by Friday, they go into Saturday and Sunday and negotiate during the weekend and sometimes spill into Monday and that's what's happened here. So the negotiations are continuing today, Monday even as I speak. Some have been completed but not everything so they're not all ready to go to the ministers. And in the second week of the COP starting on Monday, the ministers start arriving and they take over uh, the final bit of the negotiations and they don't talk about tech so much, it's about wrapping everything up into the high-level messages and something called the Marrakesh call for action that is also being drafted at the same time. Uh, so we have another five days of uh, final negotiations with the final message to come out. Um, today I'm going to focus a little bit more on the Bangladesh uh, delegation and its role in the negotiations. Bangladesh has been involved in the negotiations uh, from the very beginning. Uh, we have a set of very good negotiators uh, led at the technical level by the Secretary of the Ministry of Environment and Forest, Dr. Kamaluddin, um, some senior negotiators within the government like Dr. Nurul Kader and uh, Ziaul Haq and others, also a team of experts who are not government officials but have been doing negotiations for a long time within the Bangladesh delegation like Dr. Ayman Nishat, uh, Dr. Mezan Khan, who's uh, both professors of universities, um, and several others as well. So Bangladesh has a team of very, very experienced negotiators who are involved in the negotiations for many years. They belong to the Bangladesh, belongs to the Least Developed Countries Group, so they negotiate in many cases on behalf of the Least Developed Countries Group. Uh, another one is Hafiz Khan, uh, a young lawyer who's part of the Warsaw International Mechanism Loss and Damage Negotiation Track uh, on behalf of the Least Developed Countries. Uh, so the Bangladeshi negotiators have been much engaged in the negotiations for the last week. Uh, this afternoon, the Minister of Environment, Anwar Sen Munchu, has arrived uh, with his uh, colleagues uh, and we had a, a, a debrief with him uh, this evening with all the other Bangladeshis. There's a big contingent of Bangladeshi NGOs, people like Farah Kabir from ActionAid and uh, uh, Rizal Karim from Coast and many others. Um, and tomorrow, we expect the arrival of the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, for the high-level session. She has accepted the invitation of the King of Morocco for the high-level session, where we will open the first meeting of the Paris Agreement, and she will be there. It's more of a ceremonial occasion than it is a substantive occasion. There won't be negotiations around it, but at least in Morocco, we will have the first meeting of the parties of the uh, Paris Agreement, which is called the CMA. Uh, and so we hope to make that into a big occasion. The Prime Minister of Bangladesh being here as one of the few heads of state attending will give Bangladesh a high profile. We're expecting her to make a good major speech, perhaps talk about the National Initiative for a National Mechanism on Loss and Damage, amongst other things. Um, and so Bangladesh has, over the years, played a very important role uh, in the negotiations as negotiators and also an important role at the political level, particularly by the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. So Bangladeshis uh, should be proud of their performance in the climate change negotiations uh, over the years.